So you put together this album, and right. you know you become you become a, a neighborhood celebrity. You know, you're the you're the rapper from this area that's that's buzzing and and doing his thing, right? All right. Okay. So what happened on the night of uh, March 1992? So we finished, obviously, the album's done. We celebrated and we took all the photos for the album. And uh, so we kind of, it's, it's like an unofficial record release party. So all the homies come and call the homies. We on uh, Monston Way at Florent Road, Southside, uh, right around the corner from Burbank, right? Uh, that our, our high, our local high school in our area, and uh, a couple of the homies showed up. They had been in a, they had a little tiff. <laughs> they had a little encounter at a gas station, and uh, you know nobody was happy about that. That encounter was with some different dudes, those some cats from a different area, and uh, so it was like, hey, straight up, you know, we gonna give them the business for that. And uh, this, this is the dude's name is Maurice Proctor. We call him Baby Bread. There's some dispute. He says he's Little Bread. Little Bread says he's Baby Bread. Who knows which one is which? Uh, but Maurice Proctor, he's a, a close associate of mine, and uh, he had been harmed, and that was particularly unacceptable. So we say, what's happening? You know what you want to do? And uh, that conversation turned into a plan of, you know, while we at it. We can go get these fools of business for killing J Dog, and we know where they at. You know what I mean? So later that evening, about two in the morning, we gear up and we roll out, just straight up. We roll out and went over there, and uh, we pull up, and it's like I remember somebody having a discussion, like let's just do a drive by on this house or whatever, because somebody had cold feet. A couple of different was an exchange real quick, but it was like talk that was going up in there. Because then once the raid started going over what happened to, to Brett, it really turned into just like, fuck it then, if we're going to ride, let's go ride on these fools. I know where some big dudes live at. It really wasn't even no names. It was just some, some big targets from Meadowview. So we go over to, uh, to Meadowview. We uh, just go straight up to the door. The little homie who identifies himself as having kicked in the door, he identified himself that's how he kicked in the door, right? And uh, I go into the spot. Now, let's say the story this way. According to Abdul Griffin, right? According to Abdul Griffin, Venom kicked the door. And according to Abdul Griffin, and according to Venom, Venom kicked the door. According to Abdul Griffin, myself and Maurice went in the house. This is what Abdul Griffin says. So once we go in, it's pitch black. And... Uh, a light comes on down the hall, and our victim turns the corner, and uh, shots are fired immediately, just at the movement. And unfortunately, it turns out that the person that was struck was Mrs. Patricia Harris, uh, the mother of two Medicare Bloods named Carrie Harris and Jamal Harris. And uh, so nobody knew that at the time. I, I could speak for myself. I didn't know that who was hit. But once... Shots were fired. People started running, and once motherfuckers started running, everybody started running. You know, you know that old saying about black people, right? Once, once somebody started running, everybody running. So, people bounced. Now we were supposed to meet up back on Monson, but instead, one car went one way, the other car went another way, and so I go home. Eventually, I go home, and I hear about this later uh, through a phone call from one of my homegirls that somebody's mother had died that night. And that was the first I heard of it. Actually, the first I heard of it, we was driving back, and Venom said, who was that bitch we shot? And I remember looking at him like, I remember everything about that night, bro. I was about to try to call Quest, check the run, right? It was banging. That whole, I think it was low-end theory. And uh, I'm bumping that, and I just look back and tell him, like, shut the fuck up. There's nobody shooting no bitch. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck you talking about? Because he was always talking, hot pitch voice, Kirk. Chris Tucker, dude, you know what I mean? I'm like, just shut the fuck up. So we get back. When I finally get that call from the homegirl, I'm like, oh, sick. You know, maybe that's true. And then later on, we see it on the news. So I'm at the house. I got a bunch of, obviously, ain't nobody in my house but a bunch of little homies. It's just like three broads, and everybody else is a little homie. And my cousins start coming home from Wyatt because Artie, AJ, 
uh, Vamp was still in YA, and then George started coming home. They were coming home from YA, so these niggas on my couch, they on the floor, they all over the place. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. No adults in the house. And so they, uh, they show them the news. It's all of this, you know, this, all these people outside of the house, people angry. You can see the yellow tape, and they're talking about Mrs. Harris being shot. Stan, two months ago, a gang of teenagers kicked in Patricia Harris's front door in the middle of the night. One of them shot and killed her. Police arrested five teenagers and charged them with murder. Now prosecutors may try to prove at least one of the teens had a premeditation for killing in cold blood that he wrote about in rap songs. Patricia Harris fought to keep gangs out of her Meadowview neighborhood, but police believe gangsters killed the 42-year-old mother and grandmother by accident when they stormed her house. Police arrested five teenagers for the murder. One of those arrested is a 17-year-old rap singer named X-Rated. And I remember like, damn, you know, that's fucked up because nobody, nobody would have done that on purpose, bro. Just straight up. Not on my team. We wouldn't have done that on purpose. And so it was a, there was some dispute about that because it was like, you know, fuck them fools. You know, what's fucked up is what happened to Jerome. But you have people who thought that wasn't cool. But, you know, it's a mobocracy when you're banging us the truth. So once somebody said, fuck them fools, you know, what nobody going to disagree with that. It was like, yeah, yeah, fuck them fools, and I was it. Well, uh, Patricia Harris, the, the woman who was shot, she was she was 42 years old. She was a mother of right. five, and she had 11 grandkids mother of five. at the time. 11 yeah, grandkids. She yeah, has 33 yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, but at the time, now, at the time she had 11. 33. Yeah. Yes, sir. Once, once you started to realize what had happened, you know, and you're, you're how old at the time? Sixteen, seventeen? I'm seventeen. I was seventeen at the time. Yeah. And, and the other, the other kids were around what? The same age? Fifteen, sixteen? Everybody, everybody, everybody was a youth defender. It's seventeen, sixteen. You know, the oldest arrested person was probably. 17 maximum. The youngest, maybe 14 or 15, which was Abdul. Wow. And let me say, so, you know, even though I say Abdul Griffin, of course, being Abdul Griffin, but I don't have no spike toward that dude no more. And I'm going to keep it 100. I learned a lot of things about gangster shit that, that need to be clarified because people play games with this culture. But the truth is, I was a little boy who was, who was psychologically devastated by what he witnessed. And so he told, but he, he told like a child would tell. And then he got manipulated by the system and utilized to eat his brother's flesh. But that was just him being used by a mechanism that, you know, it wasn't no different than Negroes that pointed out where the, the slaves ran to for their masters to go catch. You know, they didn't, they wasn't so much they was doing it to them as they was doing it within the mechanism that they existed in at the time, psychologically. So I don't feel no hatred toward Abdul Griffin for what he did. Because the, the, the G-code has been warped. The expectation of a 14-year-old child even pretending to be hardcore, not to tell on you, is unrealistic. So I just, I feel like it's on me as an adult male now to recognize and adjust my expectations to reality as opposed to being offended and, and upset and have hatred for somebody who didn't live up to an unrealistic expectation. I just think it's Right, well. But so I just well, say all, that. All of. Well, all of you were children. I mean, all of you were teenagers. Like, this, there, there was no, there was no Everybody. OG in the in that crew. There was no, there was no fathers. There was no older older people. This is a bunch of kids. A bunch you know, of kids running their own. A bunch of kids running around. Yeah. Yeah. 